good afternoon. We are uh, from the Service Economics Unit. Uh, and today we will talk about uh, our project on the evaluation of outcomes and self care research uh, utilization uh, in patients with critical limb uh, treatment with human. Uh, so, this project was uh, commissioned by uh, Abbott. And I will start with some introduction. Uh, so, Critical limb threatening ischemia is a highly prevalent uh, disease. This is characterized by uh, inadequate uh, blood flow in the limbs uh, and uh, like chronic inadequate uh, limb, uh, blood flow in the, in the limbs. Uh, and it's often present in elder uh, medically individuals and uh, those with underlying conditions such as uh, diabetes or heart disease. Um, CLPI is associated with increased burden in both, uh, in both patients and the healthcare system. Uh, so first, uh, patients uh, with untreated uh, CLPI uh, face some serious complications such as non-healing wounds, severe pain, gangrene, and uh, unfortunately, uh, sometimes uh, limping teeth and um, both untreated and late treated CLPI is also associated with increased uh, with increased risk for cardiovascular events uh, and mortality. Uh, while timely interventions such as uh, revascularization can prevent this, reduce the pain, uh, improve mobility, and general the quality of the life of the patient. Um, so, regarding the healthcare system. Um, the burden translates into extended hospital stays, uh, complex treatments, uh, and long-term care, long care for the patients. Um, on the other hand, uh, uh, effective and timely interventions uh, can reduce the hospital stays and also the, the need for uh, limb amputation for the patient. So that being said, research into post-intervention outcomes and the, the use of healthcare resource in CLTI is uh, very important as it can help us optimize treatments and uh, learn how to use the healthcare resources uh, more efficiently. So uh, peripheral artery disease, PAT, is a circulatory disorder uh, that uh, is caused from uh, narrowed or blocked uh, arteries in the limbs. The most typical symptoms are uh, pain uh, in, uh, on the legs, uh, on the limbs, or uh, cramps, uh, discolorized uh, limbs, uh, weak limbs, and non-healing or slowly healing wounds. So the prevalence of PADS uh, has, has increased over the last years, and um, the reason for this is the aging and also the increased rates uh, of diabetes in the population. Uh, critically, so CLTI that was mentioned before is an advanced stage of PAD. This is considered to be a medical emergency uh, and uh, needs specialized and immediate treatment uh, in order to restore the blow and avoid the, the limb amputation. However, in some cases, in the cases that uh, another intervention is not appropriate for the condition of the patient, the doctors proceed with the limb amputation. Uh, other intervention, interventions other than amputation are the uh, revascularization procedures. So these are procedures that uh, restore the blood flow again in the limbs. And uh, some examples of these uh, procedures are the angioplasty, bypass surgery, endarterectomy, and thromboembolectomy. So the aim of uh, the project was to examine the outcomes of, uh, of reef vascularization and primary amputation procedures for patients with CLTI, uh, and also to, to investigate the use of research uh, of uh, resources, of healthcare resources, and costs one year after these uh, procedures, after these in uh, interventions. So, uh, in other words, uh, the focus for of this project was both on the outcomes uh, of these uh, procedures for the patient and also the healthcare uh, resource use and costs. Uh, and now I will pass the floor to uh, my colleague Fain, who worked on the data engineering part of the project.
Thank you. <clears throat> uh, thanks for my colleagues, uh, um, Mario. Uh, so uh, here I'm going to give a, a brief introduction about the, uh, the uh, data extraction methodology uh, about these projects. In these projects, so we are using the data source uh, from KIT database. Uh, KIT database is the current uh, integrated data site. Uh, it is a linked uh, data site based on the pa partnership between Kent, uh, uh, Kent County uh, Council Public Health and the Kent and Medway CCGs. Uh, now, KID is one of the largest integrated uh, healthcare databases in the UK. It covers uh, the health record of 2 million uh, people in around uh, 240 GP practice across Kent. Uh, the key database uh, covers the data from 2014 and to 2019. There are about uh, 20, uh, about 97 percentage of uh, primary care providers. They signed up the agreement to share the data. Uh, as uh, Kent and Medway is uh, less diverse uh, than other areas in England. Uh, in case database, there are not uh, there are not many patients recorded with uh, ethnicity information. So for this project, we didn't include uh, any ethnicity uh, information. Uh, key database also uh, covers uh, different uh, uh, fields of uh, healthcare data. It includes uh, GP events, uh, outpatient, inpatient, community, uh, mental health, and the continuing healthcare data. Uh, potentially, kids will cover the uh, social care data as well, but they are still in the process of signing up the uh, agreement with the social care data providers. Uh, here is the overview of the uh, data extraction uh, methodology about this project. So we uh, to identify the patient cohort, we, we look at the three years time period. Uh, it starts from financial year 2014-15 to financial year 2016-17. Uh, and so we look at the patient who has been diagnosed with PET or CTLI uh, within this uh, three years time period. Uh, as the patient, the one patient might have more multiple diagnosis during this three years time, uh, we will take the very first uh, date of uh, diagnosis of PIDE as the uh, index of diagnosis date. At the same time, we look at uh, mainly, uh, five main um, target uh, procedures. <laughs> at least uh, on, uh, on the PPT that so we are uh, looking at if the patient had at least one of these uh, uh, target procedures within one year after the uh, PET diagnosis. And we would also take the very first uh, uh, procedures as the index procedure and also the date as the index procedure date. Uh, after we identified the patient cohort, we, uh, the, we extract the, uh, the demographic data of the patient. It includes uh, sex, uh, age of the diagnosis, uh, IMD values, and also uh, smoking status. Uh, we look at the comorbidities of the patient uh, uh, for the long-term conditions such as diabetes and hypertension. We didn't set up any uh, time, uh, time restriction to uh, just uh, the patient had any at any uh, time uh, at any point. If they had one of the diagnosis, we would uh, flag that. And uh, for stroke and IHD, we would look at if patient has been diagnosed with this diagnosis uh, before the index procedure date. And so also we look at uh, uh, treatment uh, for um, anti-therapeutic therapy. We look at if the patient had the therapy <clears throat> uh, within one year before the index procedure or um, after the uh, after the index procedure, we look at the frequency of the therapy they had it, and also uh, the cost of the therapy. Um, for healthcare utilization, we look at um, uh, primary care readmissions, uh, outpatient appointment, uh, community care, and we look at uh, uh, how many how many times of uh, the uh, appointment they had or admissions they had within one year or three months after the index procedure, and. Um, also, we look at uh, the cost of uh, uh, each healthcare uh, utilization and also the length of stay of the readmissions. Uh, 
And another thing we look at is the future procedures, which is the, the exactly same five types of the procedures the, with the index procedures. We look at the frequencies of the procedures uh, within three months and one year after the index procedures, and also the cost of these procedures. The, the cost is based on the spell level. Uh, here is a uh, data flow that of the uh, data extraction, uh, and so we can see that uh, within the uh, three. Uh, three year times, uh, we had you know, over 4,000 patients who has been diagnosed with PAD. But after we uh, look at the patient who had a target procedure with the one year uh, after the index uh, diagnosis, we got in total 579 patients. And uh, uh, for each of the uh, uh, target procedure type, we, we, we found how many patients uh, of that, and uh, also we look at the very first uh, procedure date to find out uh, the distributions of patients uh, to have the index procedure within these five types of procedures. <coughs> and we can see that uh, for angioplasty, it's got the most uh, patient, uh, most uh, of the patients who had it as the index procedure. So for the whole process of the data extraction, uh, we applied uh, the data quality assurance. Uh, it includes uh, data profiling, uh, cleaning, validation, documentation, feedback, and uh, validation, uh, and uh, continuous improvement. And uh, for data profiling, uh, we, uh, we understand the data structure, uh, data content, and the quality characteristics. Uh, for data cleaning, we, we did uh, uh, remove the, all, the, uh, all the duplicated values. Uh, we deal with the, uh, uh, the missing data. So we standardized the, the data format. And also, uh, we, we sorted out uh, all the data discrepancy problems. And uh, for data validation, that we check uh, data integrity and uh, cross validation, and also we went through the quality rules. And the data documentation is for the transparency and the um, uh, future references. Uh, we set up a really clear and detailed data specification file uh, to help us to understand and interpret the data. Uh, we keep on having the peer, uh, peer reviews and peer, uh, peer feedbacks from our health economics team and our, health, uh, our data scientist team and also the feedback from our client. And so as uh, the QA is an um, ongoing process, so we will uh, we, we keep on, uh, we have the loop feedback and also validations to make sure that we could provide the best quality of data uh, for this project. And here is a, a I'm, I'm going to give a small example about uh, <clears throat> Uh, the uh, the problems that we met uh, during the uh, QA process. Uh, it's about the count. Uh, we, when we are doing the count of the future uh, procedures, we found we we got some duplicated counts of the procedures, and the reason why uh, it happened because we calculate the uh, uh, procedures from both uh, in, uh, from spell level and also the episode level. Uh, <clears throat> As we know that uh, uh, for one inpatient spells, it means from one patient admitted to the hospital until the patient discharged from the hospital. <clears throat> and that's the whole part, uh, that's a whole stay for the patient is one uh, inpatient spell. But during this the spell, that is will, uh, the patient will have a different uh, episode. And in kit database, for the spell level, uh, for the spell level, spell data, that they only record the primary uh, procedures, and for each episode, it will record all of the procedures that happened in that procedures, which means the primary procedure would be one of the procedures of one of the under one of the uh, episode. That would make uh, the double count for uh, for the procedures. And you might question why we do it that uh, at both uh, spell level and episode level. That is because the incompleteness of key database. Some patients, they only have the data for the spell level. They don't have the data for the episode level. So uh, if we only count it at uh, episode level, we will miss the chance to uh, get the 
uh, patients to be counted from the, in the when they only have the data from the spell level. So for this uh, situation that we found a solution that we would count all of the procedures from the spell level first, and then we will exclude all these uh, all these count from the spell level and then do the counting from the episode level. That is the solution for that. It, this is the example for this QA <coughs> uh, problem that we, we met. And uh, uh, now I'm going to pass it to my colleague Santosh to introduce the analysis part. Thanks. Thank you, Ray and Mara. So after this wonderful job done by Ray and Mara, we have set out our uh, key outcome for the interest for doing this analysis. And in particular, we want to see a demographic uh, health uh, for the patient. So we have looked into the what was the patient age basically for this analysis, what their gender looked like, how they are the IMD deprivations, in, in particular social economic status was, and also the prevalence and comorbid uh, conditions, including the established of cardiovascular really, uh, risk factors. We also look into uh, what is how the patient stay and the mortality is look like. So we have done the analysis regarding the hospital stay duration and in hospital uh, mortality rate. We also uh, look into the post-discharge primary care, especially the count for the primary care appointment for post-discharge, and then post-discharge secondary care. In this, we have carried out the assessment of the secondary care readmissions and uh, their duration of post-discharge. And then we further look into uh, post-discharge health events, which in particular we evaluate of mortality and major cardiovascular event for the post-discharge. And then post revascularization amputation, in which we have done the study for the major lip amputation, following by the revascularization. And then at last, we look for the uh, healthcare cost as a first year post uh, procedure cost, in which we look like estimate. Uh, we uh, we actually we estimate the overall uh, care cost. We consider like a primary and the secondary care appointment in their uh, post procedure year. So how we then carried out this analysis along our uh, intervention outcomes. So we have done very simple statistical analysis and these are the few steps. So as Rain already has done like uh, the selection of the cohort and, and she also like uh, work around uh, the data profiling, data validation. So once we got this cohort, we have done further exploratory data analysis to make sure again, to validate the data, the data is clean, the data is complete, and there is no further outlier into the data. And we also try to figure out, is there any obvious kind of a relation between the variables uh, uh, related to the CTI and the intervention we carried out? So after doing this, then we carried out a very simple descriptive analysis to doing our uh, outcome analysis. And then once we have those outcome analysis, we have done for the statistical test. And those statistical tests are basically related to uh, the variable specific. So for example, if we are considering the variable as a categorical, we have carried out different kind of test, a statistical test, if the variable and the variables are the numerical, then there was a different kind of test. And those tests are basically to find out whether our results are making any significant difference or not. And then we have done uh, further the multi-variable uh, analysis. In particular, we have compared two methods. One is simplest linear regression uh, algorithm. And then the other one is the most common logistic regression algorithm. So after doing this analysis, uh, so this is like furthermore how we have looked the exploratory data analysis and how we carried out the statistical uh, test. So as uh, in categorical vari variable is basically we have uh, calculated the percentage of each sub subgroup and we visualize these results using the bar chart and the pie chart. The continuous variables, so first we test about the non-normal uh, non normality of the distribution of the variable and then, the, and then uh, normality of the variables. 
And then we simply calculate the standard deviation as or the median range. And for the statistical test comparison, for the categorical uh, type of variable, we use a chi-square test to uh, make sure there's any significant difference or not among the results. And for the, uh, uh, for the normally distributed variables, we use the uh, we, we use the t test uh, for, for the analysis and for non normally distributed variable we uh, use the man u test uh, for the analysis and for the multivariate analysis we use as i mentioned we use logistic regression and the linear regression especially to see whether there is any uh, any correlation or any relation between the post of uh, operative activities such as index procedure or the CCI score. And then we also include as a predicted variable, variable uh, as a CCI type of procedures and uh, diabetes, dementia, and the presence of any chronic disease. And then significance test is carried out less than uh, P value 0 0.05. So after doing this analysis, what we found, we found our baseline characteristics. So we found that among the uh, total number of 4,252 CLTI patients, there was 65% male and their average age was 73. And into the initial intervention, we found that among these patients, 6.9% patient was those had gone through the angioplasty, 1.7% patient was gone through the bypass surgery, and 3.3% uh, patient has a lower limb amputations. And there was very interesting also a uh, few key factors like 3.6% uh, among those uh, patient among those were the current smokers and 3.5% patient has the diabetes and only 1.81% uh, uh, patient has a COPD conditions. What was the outcome around the inpatients? So we found that after doing our analysis, there were 5.2% patient died during their inpatient stay. And the median pa uh, patient stay is basically varied by the different kind of procedures types. And what was the outcome for the outpatient? There were the highest number of community care appointment. In particular, we found the community care appointment was highest for the major limb amputation, having an average 27 uh, uh, appointments and for the angioplasty followed by that is 20. And then most outpatient uh, appointments was related to the art, uh, arterial endotromy was uh, uh, average of five. And we find out that there's no significant difference uh, in the number of readmissions or community care appointment by the different procedure types. So further, we look into the more complications, then we find out that there was the highest number of cardiovascular events for the major, imputa major limb imputations, and there was the highest number of further imputation for the arterial endotromy. And then we also carried out the uh, analysis around the uh, cost, healthcare cost, and we found that the highest cost for the post-operative community care was related to the procedure of uh, major lower imputation. The highest cost for the post-operative primary care was related to the thromboembotomy. And then uh, the, and then we have done also recommend like a further economic analysis, which our uh, health economic team has done this analysis. So what was the conclusion then? So in short, the conclusion was uh, the post-operative uh, outcome vary based on the intervention taken. And the most of the patient that occur uh, in the major lower imputation group, the highest number of community care appointment was recorded for lower limb uh, amputation group, while the arterial endotomy lead to the most outpatient hospital appointments. And then we also uh, concluded that there was no significant difference in the readmissions or the community care appointment across the all procedure types. And then major lower imputation had the highest number of cardiovascular events, while the arterial endotomy lead to the most further imputations. And what was the cost implications? The cost implication was related to a major lower imputation occurred into the highest cost for the post-operative community care. And then Thumbo, uh, thrombo and endotomy occurred in the highest cost for the post-operative uh, primary care. 
So then what was the fate for the CLTI patient? So our, according to our analysis and the conclusion, our, this was our finding. The fate of the CLTI patient varies significantly depending, uh, depending the in, initial intervention. So the, to carry out the initial uh, intervention is the key here. Then the major lower imputation appears to have a most severe outcomes and the highest community care cost, while the RTL, uh, RTL uh, endotomy results is the highest number of further amputation and the most outpatient appointments. So no intervention showed as a clear advantage in terms of the readmission, length of stay during readmissions or the community care appointment. So our recommendation was that there should be a further detailed uh, economic analysis is needed to understand this uh, long-term economic impact and the uh, different intervention for the CLTI. And our client is agreed with that and they agreed for do the further economic evaluation, which our health econ economic team had done this uh, uh, evaluation, health economic eva evaluation. And then we also recommend that there should be uh, strategies to reduce the complications and the healthcare resources uh, use following the intervention for CLTI should be a, a priority in the healthcare. So these are the few references uh, which we followed uh, while doing our analysis. And these are uh, the further results. If, so th these are the basically the baseline characteristics uh, related to the different procedure types. And these are the cost and the length of the stay for the outpatient. Thank you very much. Any question? Excellent. Thanks for that. And you did that perfectly in terms of time. Right. We've got about two minutes left. Um, if anyone has got any questions or if people want to ask uh, our speakers, uh, just before they depart, I'm conscious that uh, you, there'll be a bit of doing and throwing. But um, has anyone got any further questions that um, you'd like to ask at this point? Oh, okay. Okay. So, I'm just comparing the other two works the great part. This again, we don't want to be at variation, but it's good in that sort of thing. Yeah. Could you predict the people who are going to have stronger data communication? Um, we're looking at potential. Yeah, we, we, we investigated that and we found that we don't have a sufficient data because this cohort size is just 4,720 and out of them only 600 those has gone through those, those procedures. So if we making like a predictive model based on just 400 people, then that might not be that much sufficient or well explainable. So that's why we avoid that. Any further questions or things we want to raise? Yes. Uh, did you look at mortality in different procedures? Yeah, we, we do. We do get the uh, mortality data. Uh, data that extracted. Yeah, yeah, we look into it, and the, we also uh, try to find out whether there is any relation with, related to the CLTI procedure. And there was no significant relationship. We found. Yeah.